Give me liberty and give me a net. Welcome to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness. This is the Christmas episode. Uh, fortuitously enough, I was asked to speak in church today. I'm recording this today, the 20th. Um, and so I thought, you know what? I'm going to make my Christmas episode the same material. <laughs> Why come up with two different uh, talks for one Christmas, right? So anyway, um, I, and I know some of you watched my sacrament talk on YouTube. And for those that did, sorry, it's the same. You can turn it off now. But for those that didn't, I just wanted to share. And so this is going to be a short episode, about nine minutes long. And um, I hope you enjoy it. And um, Merry Christmas. All right. Um, all right. As crazy as this year has been, I hope that especially as we enjoy the Christmas season, we can all remember that we have a Heavenly Father that is in charge, who is totally aware of each and every one of us and loves us so much that he sent his love, his son to live and die for us. Uh, I was asked to speak on the part of the Christmas story that speaks to me the most. And as soon as um, the brother asked me to speak on that, I knew immediately what I wanted to speak on. Uh, because as a mother, the part of the first Christmas that touches me the most is the relationship between Mary and her son. We don't know much about Mary, but we do know is that she was a remarkable woman. She was from Nazareth, which was not a big city and not noteworthy at all. It was rural. Mary was likely raised in a humble family. She would have helped her mother and other women in the village with chores such as weaving cloth, cooking, gathering firewood, collecting water from wells, and working in the fields. She would have been looking forward to a time when she would have a husband and children of her own. She never would have dreamt that she would be called to be the mother of the Savior and his first disciple. Eventually, Mary became engaged to Joseph, a carpenter. Then an angel, Gabriel, appeared to her and changed her life. He told Mary that she was highly favored, that the Lord was with her, that she was blessed among women, and that she was chosen. She must have been overwhelmed and confused. Gabriel then told her that she would conceive a child, but not just any child. He would be called the son of the highest and would receive the throne of his father, David. What Gabriel telling her was telling her was that her son would be both the son of God and the promised Messiah. I can only imagine how overwhelmed she must have been at hearing this, a humble young peasant girl, to be the mother of the Messiah. She must have been awed, honored, afraid, and elated all at the same time. Mary accepted the call in her humble way, saying, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. She received a confirmation of her calling later when she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. As soon as she greeted Elizabeth, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Being with her cousin, who was in a similar situation, and receiving this spiritual confirmation of her calling, must have been a great comfort to Mary. This was given to her as a tender mercy by a loving Heavenly Father who knew what she needed and when she needed it. This is a pattern with Heavenly Father. He calls us. We take a leap of faith and answer the call. And then once we've started fulfilling that calling, we receive confirmation after confirmation that we're doing the right thing. Eventually the time came. Sometime after Joseph and Mary were married, a decree was issued by Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Each Jew was to be registered for taxation at his ancestral home. And so Mary and Joseph, who were of the royal house of David, set out for their ancestral home, a small pastoral and agricultural town located about six miles southwest of Jerusalem called Bethlehem. While they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And finding no room at the inn, the delivery of the Messiah would take place in a humble stable. I find it so fascinating that our Savior, a model of humility, was born of a humble mother in a humble stable. Heavenly Father could have arranged for the birth to happen in a home of a wealthy family or in an expensive inn, but he arranged for it to happen this way. Mary knew who her baby was destined to be, but during that first little while, I imagine the two of them together bonding. 
When you look at a newborn baby, it looks as if the veil is very thin. It's like looking into their spirit and seeing where they recently arrived from. The connection between a mother and her newborn is like any, unlike any other. I had a situation where I had um, uh, a moment with my newborn when I was in the hospital after I gave birth to my first daughter, Abigail, um, the milk was not coming in. I thought that would just happen, but it wasn't. And I was very frustrated because I couldn't feed my own baby. And so because I was frustrated, I was crying and my blood pressure was up. When the nurse came in to take my blood pressure on the day I was supposed to go home, she said, I can't let you go home. Your blood pressure is too high. We can't send you home until it's normal. Well, I didn't know what to do. I, I couldn't make myself not be upset. And um, it was right around this time that I finally looked down at my baby, Abigail, and she just had the biggest smile on her face. It was like looking down into the face of my own angel. So after that, I held her and shortly thereafter, the nurse came back in, took my blood pressure again, and lo and behold, it was normal. So I, um, I felt that bonding with Abby in that moment. She came to my rescue. The connection between this humble, faithful woman who had been pondering her role in the life of her soon-to-be-born baby for several months and the Christ child must have been intense. I can just imagine them gazing into each other's eyes with wonderment and pure love. What must Mary have felt as she finally held this baby in her arms? Yes, he was the savior, but right now he was all hers. How she must have looked back on this precious time over and over again as his life and ministry unfolded. This song says it better than I can, and I won't sing it for the ears of everyone that's listening. This is Mary's Lullaby by Bertha A. Kleinman, and you can find it on YouTube and listen to it. It's wonderful. All mine is your loveliness, baby, all mine. All mine is your holiness, baby divine. Sing on, herald angels, in chorus sublime. Sing on and adore, for tonight you are mine. The wise men are coming to worship their king. The shepherds are kneeling their homage to bring. Out yonder the star over Judah will keep. No harm will befall thee, then sleep, baby, sleep. Oh, let me enfold thee, my baby, tonight, while legions are singing in joyous delight. A new star has risen to hail the divine, for you are a king, but tonight you are mine. Away, spectred future of sorrow and plight, away to the years that must follow tonight. The pangs of Gethsemane, let them be dim, the red drops of Calvary, not Lord for him. Oh, let me enfold thee, my baby, tonight, while legions are singing in joyous delight. A new star has risen to hail thee, divine, for you are a king, but tonight you are mine. All mine is your loveliness, baby, all mine. All mine is your holiness, baby, divine. Sing on, herald angels, in chorus sublime. Sing on and adore, for tonight you are mine. Elder Bruce R. McConkie of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles wrote, can we speak too highly of her whom the Lord has blessed above all women? women? There was only one Christ and there was only one Mary. Each was noble and great, and each was foreordained to the ministry he or she performed. We cannot but think that the father would choose the greatest female spirit to be the mother of his son, even as he chose the male spirit like unto him to be the savior. We should hold up Mary with the proper esteem, which is hers. I bear testimony that Mary was a humble, faithful, obedient young woman that accepted the calling that allows us to celebrate more than 2,000 years later that our Savior entered the world. Not only was she called to conceive and give birth to the Messiah, but she was to raise him. How much trust Heavenly Father must have had in her to entrust his only begotten Son to her, her care. I am grateful to her, to my Heavenly Father for sending his Son, and to our Savior Jesus Christ for being willing to come down and save the world. I say those things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening to my Christmas episode of Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness. I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May 2021 be much, much, much better than 2020.